What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. Um, in this video we're going to talk about using the extension Curvaloft um, to generate structural framing in a model. Um, I do want to make a note, um, or I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you like what I'm doing on this, this channel, please make sure to check out that link in the notes below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this actually wasn't quite the video that I wanted to make, um, but I have just transferred over to a new computer, which I'm super excited about. But at the same time, it's not quite doing what I want it to do yet. Um, I wasn't able to get some licenses transferred and that kind of thing. So this is just kind of a quick um, video of how you can use the extension Curvaloft in order to create um, basically some structural framing. And so what I've, what I've done is I've created an arc that basically is 20 foot wide and uh, it's about 10 feet high. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to use the offset tool to make a copy of this line. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're gonna go ahead and give this an offset of two foot. And so what that should do is that should give us a line that's on the red axis, that's two foot taller than this arc right here and so now i'm going to take that and i'm going to assume that i'm going to have something like we'll call it two feet in between these so i move this piece over two feet and then i'm going to make and so now i've got a taller line and a shorter line and i'm going to use the move tool to make a copy of those and so since there's two feet between these two that means the next piece in this sequence would be four feet out so i'm just using the move tool in copy mode so select those tap the m key click on the corner and tap the control key and then i've set this point and i'm going to type in times we'll call it times five so i'm going to type in times five and hit the enter key and what that'll do is that'll create five copies of that object and so now i've got this series of lines that's going back and forth between um, the different heights and i'm probably going to make one more just so this ends on the tall piece not on the short piece oops and so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the extension curve aloft to create some lines that we can create structural framing along and so the way that we're going to do that is I'm just going to drag my mouse from right to left across this face, and then we're gonna activate Curvaloft. And Curvaloft is a free extension, and I'll link to it in the notes below, that you can use to create faces along objects. So in this case, I'm gonna select this object for loft by spline. What that does is that generates a face in between these objects. And so you could see you could make, a, what are those? Those kind of butler building type things. Um, by doing this, so if you wanted to create kind of a metal face or something like that, you could do that. And what we're going to do instead in this case is we're actually going to generate some um, straight lines between all these points. And so in order to do that, we're going to use some of these options up here. So the first option we're going to select is the spline method, and we're just going to say straight line. And so when I do straight lines, you can see how that takes all of the curve out of this and it makes these just go straight. And you can see what Curvaloft does is it basically says, okay, for every point in these arcs, I'm gonna draw a line. So it's going point to point to point to point to point. And so what we want Curvaloft to do in this case is we only want it to generate the lines, not the faces. And so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna click on these vertical lines. And as soon as we click on these vertical lines, that's gonna get rid of all of our faces and it's just gonna generate the lines between these points. And the other thing I wanna know is it's really important that you come in here and set your number of segments to one. Um, so I'm gonna turn my face back on for a second. And so you can see if I add segments to this it's adding more lines in here well what this is going to do is this is going to split this line up into different segments and you don't want that because when you generate this into tubes it's going to create each one as a separate tube and that's why you get all the different line objects in here so what we want to do instead is we want to drag this number of segments down to one and so when you drag it down to one these will all get brought in as a single line instead of as a series of lines and so we're going to click on this line to just generate or we're gonna click on this object to just generate our lines and we're gonna go ahead and click the checkbox. 
And if you remember, one of the ways that we create structural framing in an object is we use the extension lines to tubes to take all of these lines and just make tubes out of them. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this again, but I'm just going to create some lines along the top face. So I'm just going to move to the front here. I'm going to do a right to left drag. Remember that selects things that you drag the box over without you having to select the whole thing. We're just going to activate curve aloft again. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set our number of segments to one. And we're just going to click on this object right here. And you can see that's going to give us a series of lines that run along this face right here. So we're going to go ahead and click the checkbox. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do that again on this bottom piece. And I realize this may not be exactly the way that structural framing, um, the way that your trusses go in here, but it works for right now. You could also probably come in here and do some interesting things with these diagonal lines. Um, or well, let's try it. Yeah, so the other thing you could also do is you could also come in here and you could probably create some kind of diagonal pieces along here as well. Um, we don't necessarily want to do that right now, but that's just another option that you have in the future. So remember, same thing, you just set your number of segments to one and then go ahead and click that. So now what we have in here is we have all of our lines that we want to generate our tubes along. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the extension lines to tubes, which I'll link to in the notes below to generate a series of tubes. So you're just going to go to Tools, Convert Arc Circles Lines to Cylinders, and in this case we're going to say yes to follow me on curves, yes to create group, and we're going to set our diameter to one inch, and we'll set our precision to eight. Precision sets the number of segments in the circles that it's generating your tubes along. So we don't want this to be too much because we don't want to generate a ton of geometry. But I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see what that did is that came in here and that generated our tubes along this face. Well, now we're going to come in here. We're going to double click inside this group and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to do tools, arcs, lines, circles to cylinders. We're going to click OK. And we're going to generate our tubes along here. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're also going to do that for these outside tubes. So we'll just select all of those run it one more time, we'll click OK. And so you can see, huh, apparently I didn't do that for the inside ones. We'll do that for the inside ones as well. So you can see there's a lot of tube creation going on, but that gives you kind of your general framework in here. And you could probably fool around with some other ways to create this. I know there's some cool ways you can use like joint push pull and that kind of thing. Um, and so what we've got, if we go look in our outliner, I'm going to take all of these groups full of tubes and put them together. So I'm going to do a make group and then I'm going to hide that. And I'm going to get rid of every one of these lines except for one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the offset tool to give this a little bit of thickness. So in this case, I'm gonna give it a thickness, we'll call it four inches for right now. And I'm just gonna draw little lines across these faces. And then now we can unhide. And if you wanted to, you could now use this to generate your skin. So you can use that to generate your skin along this object as well. So you can see how it's really quick and really easy to create something like this once you have an idea how Curveloft creates all of your lines and your faces. And so probably in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the extension profile builder to make a smart building that'll automatically generate some trusses and that sort of thing in here. Um, it'll be a little bit different, but basically what you can do is you can create a smart building that'll fill all of that stuff in. And uh, you can get the uh, I'll link to a video that I made last week on Artisan and Profile Builder on how to do this a little bit. And then um, I'll create a video getting a little more in depth as well um, sometime this week. So that's where I'm gonna end this, today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Uh, do you find it helpful? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.